Hello, kia ora, g'day. I'm Philip Duncan from Weather Watch TV on YouTube with your Climate Watch update for the month of October, covering the weather patterns around Australia, New Zealand, and the South Pacific, brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz. So let's have a look and see where we're at at the moment. This is an air pressure map, but also the misery index. It doesn't show a lot of uh, temperature gradients, but what it does show you is the more extreme areas. Blue, zero and below, red, 30 and above, and the yellow up here around the top end of the Northern Territory, 40 degrees and above. So if you're in the dark shading or the gray areas, the black areas, those are basically temperate, not too hot, not too cold at this stage. Although some of you may not be feeling that in some parts of uh, Southeastern Australia and Southern parts of New Zealand where there's a little bit of that blue shading showing up as we go into this evening because of the colder air flows that are around. So let's kick off with the marine point of view. Uh, around Australia, sea surface temperatures over August. They were third warmest on record and coming up to the end of September, uh, warmer than average across much of Australia, particularly the east coast. Some parts of the north and the south, about average for this time of the year. Globally, August, just like July was, was the third warmest on record. And around New Zealand, they've actually crept downwards a wee bit, possibly because of all the southerly winds and southwesterlies we've been getting. Uh, but we do still have some areas moderate to strong. Other areas, more than half the country, has no marine heat wave at all. The climate drivers, so let's go to the Pacific Ocean to begin with, still neutral. In other words, we don't have El Nino, we don't have La Nina. But it's worth pointing out the Bureau's model, also the international ones bar one, all suggest that La Nina levels may be briefly reached during spring, but then disappears again back to neutral by summer. In other words, with us this far south of the equator, most of us around New Zealand and Australia may not even notice that but we'll have to monitor it because it may produce more low pressure zones north of us. Around the Indian Ocean, finally got a negative phase of the Indian Ocean dipole. That basically means uh, that you've got warmer seas west of Western Australia, bringing in better chances of rain to Western Australia and also up towards Indonesia. But again, that is expected to go back to neutral by early summer. And then finally, there's SAM, the Southern Annular Mode. Uh, also at the moment, it is remaining neutral, to negative, oh sorry, it's negative at the moment, but will remain in that sort of neutral to negative area. To be honest with you, Sam, I find the messiest of all of them because the Southern Ocean is always changing, it's always chaotic. And so from a you know, long-term perspective, this doesn't help me as much as just simply looking at the weather maps does, but it is a, a little messy there, and that may mean windier weather coming around the southern parts of Australia and New Zealand. In other words, what we've got at the moment. Now, we've also got the sudden stratospheric warming. I talked about this the other day, so if you've already seen it, hit fast forward a little bit here. But basically what you would normally have is this polar vortex. It's, it's a fairly circular area that contains the cold weather down around Antarctica. Now, what happens when you get a sudden stratospheric, sudden stratospheric warming is when high up in the atmosphere, well above Earth, temperatures have gone a lot higher than usual. You know, the world, things are moving around all the time and changing. But when this happens, it changes the shape of that polar vortex. Rather than being tightly packed all around Antarctica, it gets loose more like a flower or a star, and that sends bursts of cold air out from the poles and can bring in you know, what we would call a, a significant cold front or a wintry outbreak. But at the same time that it does that, nearby, it can be doing the opposite. It can be pulling down tropical warm air. And so that's what we're seeing around the southern hemisphere. And it may not happen just in our part of the world, it may happen out at sea where no one notices it, but it's possible over the coming months, we're going to see more of a spring-like weather pattern, perhaps more so than usual. And that may mean the windier weather and cold fronts keep brushing by, but also a mixture of warm days in there too. So let's try and break it down for you with the air pressure maps. So we kick off here on the 1st of October. There is that big high north of New Zealand, stretching right up into the South Pacific. Further to the west, there is the next big high around the Indian Ocean, and that stretches out a wee bit to South Australia. Otherwise, there's a fair bit of low pressure around at the moment, more of it sinking over the northern parts of Australia, and big storms. As I just mentioned before, they're going to keep circling around Antarctica, as they do, but because the polar vortex isn't as tight as it normally is, you may find more of those lows sort of coming up into southern parts of Australia, and especially the South Island of New Zealand. As you jump through to the second part of the month, not a great deal of change. You've still got what I call the ceiling of high pressure along here, which means all the storms that are carrying on around Antarctica can only go up so far before they run into the blocking highs. And that creates 
the squash zone, windy westerlies blowing across here. If this is New Zealand next week, you know, severe weather is certainly likely as far as gale force conditions. And I know parts of Tasmania and parts of southeastern Australia will be seeing some of those strong winds as well. But it's also worth noting the storms are right down next to Antarctica itself. So they sort of fan out with this windy weather. So it doesn't necessarily get really cold. Windy westerlies blow on through and that can really dry out eastern parts of uh, New Zealand, eastern parts of Australia as well. As we go to the middle of the month, perhaps some signs of summer coming because you start to see these low pre uh, high pressure zones drifting lower down on the screen. This one from the Indian Ocean doing it, this one over southeast Australia, and the next one well east of New Zealand. So you're starting to see them drop down a wee bit more. As we go to summer, they tend to go further southwards, coming over us more often. And that's what gives us our lovely summer weather, hopefully. Um, so we are seeing a bit of variety in here, but you're also noticing, I mean, the low pressure up here in the tropics is usually there, but what you're noticing now is it's sinking down northern parts of Australia and even parts of Western Australia. And that uh, negative IOD may be contributing to some of that low pressure up there as well. So what that means is typical spring weather as we go through the month of October for the most part. So here are the soil moisture levels. We'll kick off with New Zealand first of all. This is where we were back in August. Hawke's Bay, kind of the only area that was jumping out as being drier than usual, and it, as it's done all year. And now you see what's happening with these windy westerlies. You see Hawke's Bay, Wider Upper, uh, uh, Marlborough, excuse me, and Canterbury all showing signs of drying out. Now that's normal for this time of the year, except you know with a lot of windy westerly weather coming up, we do expect eastern areas to continue to dry out and western areas to stay in the green side of things, hopefully not going into the blue. I know some of you, especially around Taranaki, Waikato, Hauraki area, uh, asking for the tap to be switched off. It's not going to happen just yet, but hopefully you will get more days with drier weather now coming into the mix. Jump over to Australia, a lot of blue showing up at the moment, but we are still seeing some dry conditions here in Western Australia. Hopefully those thunderstorms that are coming over the next seven days help to fix that area and even some parts of South Australia. But it's around Victoria where most of you want rain. That's certainly where I'm getting most of the feedback on YouTube. You do have some wet weather coming through, so there may be some relief in some of these areas, but it may not be enough to really you know, reverse everything. Most other places are looking fairly good for this time of the year from a soil moisture point of view. Let's jump into the sea surface temperatures. Look at the big blob up here. There's been news stories about this globally, just how much warmer than usual it is across the North Pacific. You drop down to the equator, you can see signs of La Nina where it's cooler here and warmer out to the west. No wonder we're seeing a whole lot of typhoons at the moment in the Western Pacific. Come down to Australia, normal to even below normal in some of these northern areas, normal around the Great Australian Bight, but it's warmer than average over here in the Indian Ocean and warmer than average for the most part around a large part of the Tasman and the Coral Sea. So as we go closer to New Zealand, you can see you know, these areas that are slightly warmer than average, although you, when you're getting into the marine heat waves, you're really getting up to three, four, five degrees above normal. We're not really in that situation for the most part. To make it more simplistic, this map here shows you the only areas that are really getting up into that strong marine heat wave, a couple of spots around uh, Northland, uh, one spot here around Marlborough, and then down here around Fiordland. Half the country, though, does not have a marine heat wave at the moment. Finally, let's get into the rainfall. Here is the big picture for uh, the next two weeks. With all the westerlies blowing through, the two areas that stand out in New Zealand and Australia, west coast, west coast of Tasmania, the west coast of the South Island, easily seeing two, 300 millimetres. And in fact, the North, uh, South Island, excuse me, could be seeing four, 500 millimetres or more over the next couple of weeks. So a lot of rain coming through there. Eastern areas not as wet. Dry areas to the north of New Zealand, thanks to high pressure. Uh, these highs that are moving through are also keeping parts of Australia dry, but there is a bit more tropical life up here. So let's just quickly show you two animations, one for New Zealand, one for Australia, showing rainfall for two weeks coming up. And look how it's westerly driven, just one westerly front after the other. And so it piles up, especially against the mountains of the west coast, 400, 500 millimetres expected there over the next two weeks. Up around the North Island, these western areas, slightly wetter than average, 100 to 150 millimetres um, in some spots here in the middle and further to the south. 
Eastern areas though, not seeing a lot of rain in Hawke's Bay and Gisborne, Tairawhiti, and not huge amounts around Canterbury and coastal Otago, but you do have some spillover from the West Coast. Now we jump to Australia's two week animation. You can see the thunderstorms developing in Western Australia, low pressure and showers up here in the north. A couple of them might even come in out of the Coral Sea, but all those westerlies in the south here keeping the west coast of Tasmania very wet. Eastern areas, not as much. And look at Victoria, showers and some rain relief in the southern half, but you only have to go to the northern half, it's a different story. And New South Wales, Queensland, you know, really hit and miss, as is South Australia getting that rain relief to you. So that is all from me for today. Before I go, I'll shove on this uh, 16 day animation. Shove, that's probably not the right word. Place, um, play. There we go, the video's going. Um, I'll, I'll step off the screen in a moment so you can look at this more clearly. But basically we are seeing a lot of windy westerlies blowing through big storms south of us, as you would expect. High pressure kind of coming in a little bit to the south here as we go later into the month. That might bring some more settled weather finally to New Zealand, but really right up here to the 16th of October, that is still an unsettled weather pattern for New Zealand. And even behind that high, low pressure, and the next big strong high way out over the Indian Ocean. So the lack of high pressure makes it vulnerable for low pressure and rainmakers to develop. But look, up in the tropics, still no big sign yet of anything too serious as far as La Nina is concerned. That's all from me for another month. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again one month from now with our next Climate Watch update.